And in business, the much-anticipated 2019 Finance Act has now been published in the Gazette, having a commencement date of 13th January 2020 as a date it was signed into law. Objectives of the bill include to promote fine fiscal equity, align domestic laws with global best practices, and support micro, small, and medium-sized businesses. Other major objectives of the bill include increasing government revenues and stakeholder investments in capital markets through the introduction of incentives. How However, more grassroots Nigerians are particularly concerned about how this would affect them. Joining me live in the studio is Larry Akim Bolajo, Manager, Oil, Gas and Power Group at Anderson. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for me. Yes, uh, regarding the finance bill, one major concern for Nigerians right now is the 7.5 VAT. They place a phone call and they see VAT included. Prior to now, we know that, of course, the 5% VAT was part of what they were paying for. But help them understand why this has to be. Well, I mean, if you, if you look at the objective of the Finance Act, I mean, it was a bill, now it's an act, it's been signed into law. Um, one, of the, one of the objective is to increase, you know, um, tax revenue to the government, you know, and these finance acts would typically follow the appropriation acts, you know, so it's supposed to fund the budget, provide for avenues where tax um, revenues can be increased. So um, one of the initiatives in the finance act to increase revenues for the government through taxation is the increase increment in VAT from 5 to 7.5%. So, I mean, the, the regular person on the streets would typically have to also comply with that, re that requirement. And um, most of the things that they buy in terms of goods and, se and services would also, the value of the tax on those kind of transactions would also increase. So, I mean, it's not going to ex exempt anybody from um, payment of VAT on vertible transactions. So, I mean, it's going to affect everybody. That, and that's, that's really what VAT is all about. Now, when you do the math, I mean, I tried to, I did the math this morning, and you realize that the the 7.5 VAT, when you take out the when you take out the 5%, which was what was obtainable before, and put, do like a 2.5 off the four naira per minute when you place a phone call, you realize that the 10 cobble behind it is, you know, what's the extra that's supposed to be on yeah. there. So how would this potentially affect Nigerians? Well, I mean... I mean, I, it's a big deal for some people. Yeah, I mean, I agree, but... Um you know, you know what they say, one of the things that is certain in life is taxation. And um, provided that it's a vertible service, you know, regardless of what the feelings are, um, it's a vertible transaction, so 5% the prior, uh, the five percent that was you know, applicable before has to be increased on all applicable transactions. So I mean, everybody has to embrace it. I mean, nobody wants to pay, but it is. I mean, it is what it is. You know. I mean, it's more practical for me because I placed a call this morning to ensure that I, yeah, what I was seeing online was you know yeah. valid. And then going into supermarkets, you find out that the 7.5 VAT it looks as though it has been applied on every single item. But we have, we know that some items are supposed to be tax exempted already. Absolutely. Um, I, I think the issue with that is the lack of compliance from all of some, some of these um, supermarkets, right? Um, I think what the, the approach they typically take is to put a flat 7.5% on every item that they sell instead of exempting specific um, items. items. And then you, you see that with, um, with, with restaurants as well. You know, before now, bottled water is exempt. But if you go to a restaurant and then you buy food and bottled water, they apply 7.5% on everything. everything. You know, so those are the kind of th conversations that we need to have. Um, I'm not sure how, how strong it will be to have that conversation one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the sales rep in the, in the restaurant. So I think the government has to find Address a way to, that. absolutely, they have mm -hmm. to find a way to sensitize these people and ensure that they follow the provisions of the law with respect to the items that were exempted from VAT in the Finance Act. Now, on the issue of the company income tax, we know that for companies that are their return at the end of the year is about below 25 million naira. They are exempted from the CIT. However, there are still some requirements. There are still some things that are expected of them. Things, I know that um, you need to still adhere to tax regulations and some others. You want to talk about it briefly? Yeah, so um, 
one of the objectives again is to is to increase the ease of doing business, and that is that's the initiative from the government. So um, companies that are that end that have revenue of 25 million and less are supposed to be exempted from payment of CIT. However, they are not exempted from filing returns. They are not exempted from following all the other provisions of the, of the CIT Act. So they are still supposed to file returns and the penalties for not filing returns will also apply to them. So I mean, it's important that people really understand um, what the provisions of the, of, the, of the Finance Act is and not just think that um, once you are, because people typically say that you're exempted from payments of taxes, means that every other obligations have to yeah. be, yeah. Mm. So they still have responsibilities. Absolutely. So I, I think it's just important that we also um, yeah. restate all of these things. Pickable. Thank you so much. Yeah. Because of time, that's all we can have. But thanks for joining us in the studio. Thank you yeah, for having thank me. Thank you. And that's all on business news. Others are still ahead on Plus TV African News. is around the point of entertainment and sports. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs>